Today on Public Eye News, wildfires are still raging in California and the GM strike ends. Todd Rose will have our cloudy forecast and later Devante Stein has an update on Sunday football. Hi, I'm Joseph Sigourney. And I'm Maya Kurth and this is Public Eye News. Thirteen students from Northern Michigan University traveled all the way to San Diego, California last weekend for the Public Relations Student Society of America International Conference. The five-day conference consisted of presentations, networking, and workshops. One major keynote speaker was former Mexican President Vincente Fox. Vice President of the NMU PRSSA chapter, Hannah Johnson says, quote, the professional knowledge and connections I made in only a few days are invaluable to my future and career in the PR industry, end quote. NMU's PRSSA chapter is very active with over 30 members that attend their weekly meetings. The group plans many events on and off campus, and their largest being the annual Marquette Coffee Crawl. Yesterday was the third annual Patoni Pasta Party held at the Barry Event Center in Marquette. This year, the event had one of the largest turnouts, and hockey fans came together to raise money for the Marquette junior hockey team. The event included a pasta dinner, games, and the chance to talk to current NMU hockey players. Acclaimed former hockey coach Rick Homley was also in attendance and shared some stories about his coaching past. The event also included raffles and prizes totaling over $9,000. A man was arrested Sunday for a felonous assault complaint involving a shotgun. Troopers were called to an address in Humboldt, Humboldt Township around 9 a.m. after the suspect became violent during an argument with family members. When family began to leave the suspect's residence, the suspect exited the home with a shotgun and fired a gun in the direction of their vehicles. According to the Michigan State Police, the male suspect had, recently, had been recently released from jail and is suffering from a mental illness. Troopers made contact with the man as he was leaving his residence by boat on a river. He was taken into custody. The suspect is facing several counts of felonious assault involving a firearm. And a woman is dead following a mobile home fire Saturday morning in Sands Township. The Marquette County Sheriff's Office says emergency crews responded shortly before 9 a.m. to the home in Mobile Estates Trailer Park. Upon arrival, the heavy smoke and fire were seen coming from the trailer. Deputies attempted to locate the homeowner but were unable to, and attempts were made to look inside the trailer, but entry was not possible. After the fire was extinguished, the woman's body was located in the ruins of the trailer, and the woman's dog was unable to be located. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. The Art Van in Marquette announced their winner for their Community Inspirational Hero Award. Chris LaJoy received the award for his many years for voluntary service with Marquette veterans. Chris started volunteering at the Jacob Eddy Home for Veterans at 19 years old and also works with Hometown Battles, an organization that helps veterans with emergency situations. He says, quote, I just like to help our veterans and I'm pretty passionate about helping our veterans in the community. And it was a real surprise to me that people took notes and nominated me for this, end quote. Chris says that he would not have been able to do this without the support of his friends and family. The 40-day auto workers union strike against General Motors has come to an end. United Auto Workers came to an agreement on a four-year labor, labor contract that included annual raises, health insurance, and not blocking the company's closure of four factories. Over 48,000 workers started to come back to work on Saturday and more continue to come back to work this week as well. Michigan Senators Gary Peters and Debbie Stabenow agree that this contract will be beneficial for both General Motors and the workers. And after this break, we'll have national and international news. Next time on Antiques Roadshow, could an antenna from the Mercury capsule be a valuable collectible today? I have it because my grandfather was the captain of the ship, the Noah, that picked John Glenn up out of the ocean when he landed in the ocean. So whatever goes up into space and comes down from space that's part of a space flight okay. goes for big money. My goodness. Find out next time on Antiques Roadshow from Virginia Beach. Tonight at 8 and tomorrow afternoon at 3. Welcome back to Public Eye News. Eliminating the Islamic State's group elusive leader gives President Donald Trump a new argument for leaving Syria, but the U.S. military campaign against the extremists is far from finished. The killing of Abu Bakr al baghdadi by U.S. forces leaves Islamic State without an obvious leader. A major setback for organization in March was forced by American troops and Kurdish forces out of the last portion of its self-declared caliphate, which was once spanned the swarth of Iraq and Syria. 
Trump earlier this month went from declaring a near complete withdrawal from the U.S. forces from Syria, deciding that some, perhaps several hundred, must stay to keep eastern Syria's oil fields from falling back in the hands of the Islamic State. Trump also agreed to keep about 150 U.S. troops at a base in southern Syria. And more on this story from Nicole Killian reporting from the White House. He didn't die a hero, he died a coward. Crying, whimpering, screaming. President Trump announced the death of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi from the White House Sunday and said he watched the raid play out in real time. We watched it uh, so clearly. We had absolutely perfect, as though you were watching a movie. Now the president says he may release video showing some of the last moments of al-Baghdadi's life. Am I considering releasing video footage of the raid? And we may take certain parts of it and release it, yes. Al-Baghdadi's death is a national security win for President Trump, who has faced bipartisan criticism for withdrawing U.S. troops from Syria, enabling the escape of some ISIS prisoners. But American soldiers were seen crossing back into Syria from Iraq this weekend, and President Trump confirmed their mission. We're out, but we are leaving soldiers to secure the oil. The president is also defending his decision not to notify congressional leaders about the al-Baghdadi mission ahead of time, slamming Democrats conducting the impeachment inquiry. I think Adam Schiff is the biggest leaker in Washington. You know that. I know that. We all know that. I've watched Adam Schiff leak. He's a corrupt politician. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says he found out about the mission when the rest of the world did. Look, it's, it's great that we've gotten al-Baghdadi and killed him. He's a dangerous man, an evil man. The fight against ISIS has to continue. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called al-Baghdadi's death significant, but added the House must be briefed on this raid, which the Russians, but not top congressional leadership, were notified of in advance. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. The longest-serving African-American congressman, Representative John Conyers Jr., passed away at 90 years old on Sunday. The Detroit native was elected to his 26th term as representative in 2014. Some of his major highlights of his career included his support for the Motor Voter Bill of 1993, Voting Rights Act of 1965, and he also advocated for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which eventually was enacted in 1983. In Northern California, improving conditions could help crews gain ground on wildfires that have forced tens of thousands of people to evacuate. Janet Shaleman reports from a hilltop in Heldsburg, California, a town that has been evacuated due to the historic fires. The Kincaid fire roared back to life overnight, burning at least one structure and making some roads impassable, as Sonoma County, north of San Francisco, was battered by wind-driven flames. On Sunday, this historic winery outside the town of Healdsburg was destroyed. The fire started Wednesday, then intensified over the weekend, spreading embers over miles of tinder dry brush. Wind gusts topped 100 miles an hour. If we were to let one of these homes burn, it could very easily spread to the next, to the next, to the next, and to the next. Oh my God. Strike teams battled several fires in the area. One to the south in Vallejo shut down a major highway, another damaging this tennis club. This fire behind us just popped up here within the last few minutes and is spreading fast. Even with 3,000 firefighters on the ground, they can't get to every one. Even under mandatory evacuation orders, some stayed behind. You know, one guy came in, he was telling me to leave. It's just hard, it's hard to leave, you know. The utility PG&E cut power to almost a million customers to prevent downed power lines from sparking fires. To say that conditions are a tinderbox is probably an understatement uh, because when you put an offshore wind on it, it uh, literally only takes one spark. That sounds critical at this point. It is very critical right now. We've been very fortunate citizens have left the area when we've asked them to, but uh, unfortunately the weather's not cooperating with us. Evacuation orders remain in place right now. So for the owners of this winery and many other structures in this area, they have not been able to return to take stock of what's left. Janet Shamley and CBS News, Healdsburg, California. And stay right here because Todd will be back with our weather and later Devante with our sports. Coming up this week on High School Bowl, we kick off our 42nd season of scholastic competition with two great games. In the first one, Superior Central takes on Big Bay Dinoc. 
I'm Jim Koski, and then in the second part of our game, it's kind of a battle of M95 as Republic Michigami takes on Iron Mountain. That's coming up this week, the 42nd season premiere of High School Bowl. And welcome back to Public Eye News. I'm Todd Rose here to take a look at your weather. As you can see behind me, we got the sun poking out of the clouds a little bit, but those clouds will be back later tonight and they're bringing some snow with them. So looking at our current conditions, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies, 43 degrees with winds west at north miles an hour. And pressure, barometric pressure, 29.98 inches and holding steady. Moving into tonight, we're gonna see our first rain snow of the year, about one to two inches is what they're calling for. Roads are gonna be slick, so do be careful driving. Low of 30 degrees, winds north at five miles an hour. And moving into tomorrow, uh, snow in the morning is possible with a high of 42 and winds west at 10 miles an hour. Taking a look around the UP, we're seeing pretty much mid 40s everywhere. Sault Ste. Marie and Manistique both 45 and 43 and 44 down in Escanaba, Menominee as well. 45 over in Iron Mountain. And then over in Ironwood, we're seeing a chilly day with 35 degrees and 37 degrees up in Houghton. Back here in Marquette, it's 43 degrees as we await the snow tonight. Looking ahead, Wednesday, we're looking at a high of 40, a low of 30, and mostly sunny skies. About the same thing on Thursday with a high of 38, low of 30, partly sunny. And Friday, we have a chance of snow, but mostly cloudy skies um, looking to be the norm that day with a high of 39 and a low of 30. And Devante, we got some chance storms coming up. Now, here you got something about the enemy volleyball team having a chance to win this weekend. Yes, I do. Thanks, Todd. The women's volleyball traveled to the University of Wisconsin Parkside this past weekend for GLIAC play. The Wildcats got the brooms out and picked up their fourth sweep of the season. The Wildcats won all three matches with scores of 25-18, 25-20, and 26-24. Sophomore Haley Wickstrom led the way offensively, tying up 12 kills, while senior Sarah Kuhn followed up with 11 of her own. Sophomore Liv Lizzie Stark chipped in 10 kills for the Wildcats as well as two aces. Freshman Lauren Van Romero dished out 36 assists on the day. Defensively for the Wildcats, sophomores Ellie Yakko and Lauren Caprini contributed on the defensive end with 18 and 12 digs for the Wildcats. The Wildcats are now to, to 10 and 12 on the season while improving to 6 and 5 in GLIAC play. The women will return home this Saturday to take on rival Michigan Tech. Good luck, Wildcats. Moving on to check out Week 8 NFL actions, the Lions picked up a win at home against the Giants 31-26. Matthew Stafford threw for 342 yards and three touchdowns, two of them to Kenny Galladay as he also had 123 yards receiving. Teddy Bridgewater, after leading the Saints to five straight wins, passed the torch back to future Hall of Famer Drew Brees as he threw for 373 yards and three touchdowns in his long-awaited return. The Saints would defend the Superdome and march past the Cardinals 31-19, improving to 7-1, winning six straight. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers stormed into Arrowhead Stadium and escaped with a 31-24 win, improving to 7-1. Rodgers would throw for 305 yards and three touchdowns. The Patriots continue their undefeated season as they defeat the Browns 27-13. The Bears lose at the Chargers 16-17 as their kicker misses a game-winning field goal as time expired. The 49ers also stay undefeated as they roll past the Panthers 51-13. The winless Dolphins travel to Pittsburgh to take on the 2-4 Steelers to wrap up Week 8. Checking out some NBA scores from the weekend, the Thunder rolled past the Warriors 120 to 92. The Grizzlies beat the Nets 134-133 in overtime off of Jay Crowder's three at the buzzer. Kyrie Irving had 37 points, seven boards, and seven assists in the loss. Rookie John Morin put up 30 points and dished out nine assists in the win. The Lakers picked up two wins this weekend, beating the Jazz 95-86 on Friday, as well as the Hornets on Sunday with a score of 120 to 101. Russell Westbrook picks up his first triple double of many to come, scoring 28, grabbing 10 boards, and dishing out 10 assists as the Rockets beat the Pelicans 126 to 123. And that's all the time we have today in Public Eye News. I'm Devontae Stein. And I'm Joseph Cerny. In behalf of all of us here at Public Eye News, have a great evening. in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.